Hi, I'm Stephanie Jaworski of JoyBaking.com. Today we're going to make homemade bagels, and this is what it looks like. As you can see, it's a donut-shaped yeast bread. What's unique about a bagel is that you boil them and then you bake them, and it is the boiling that gives the outside crust, makes it wonderfully chewy, but inside the bread is quite dense, but it's soft and it's moist. So, the one thing I like to do, which is a little different, is when I make my uh, bagel dough, I like to add a pre-ferment. And that's going to make our bagel even more tasty. And really, a pre-ferment is just like a small amount of dough that you have to make the night before. That's the only thing. You have to start, think ahead a bit. So in a bowl, I have one and three quarter cups, which is 230 grams of all-purpose flour, plain flour. To that, I'm going to add just a little bit of yeast, just an eighth of a, a teaspoon. Now, I'm using SAF Red Instant Yeast. I like that because I just dump it right in there. I don't have to proof it. And then it gives a really good rise. But if, you can use an equal amount of the active dry. But what you're going to have to do is take a bit of the water that we're going to add, maybe a quarter of a cup, 60 mils, 60 mils, 60 grams, and heat it to lukewarm and then stir your yeast in there and let it foam up. But since I'm using the instant, I don't have to do that. Save myself a step. And then I'm going to add, it's a half a cup minus one teaspoon, so 115 grams of water. I'm using ice cold filtered water. So pour that in. And then essentially we're just going to mix this together. You can just use your hand, you can use a wooden spoon. I like to use these plastic scrapers and just work the water into the flour. The important thing is, when you're doing this, however you decide to mix it, is you want all the flour to be moistened. And this is going to be a stiff dough. So you might say, that's not enough water. Yes, it is. <laughs> Believe me, it is. You just gotta, you're gonna have to work it a bit here to make sure all the flour is moistened. When I'm uh, mixing this, if you have like a flat scraper like this, or you could just use a knife even, what I do is I cut down through and I just kind of go around and stack it like so. And I keep just doing this. And then every once in a while I stop and it feels, it's a, like I said, it's a dry feeling dough, but put your hand inside. You don't want any uh, flour that hasn't been moistened, so just check through. But it's a very stiff dough, as you can see, and quite dry. And once you do that, mine feels pretty good. What you want to do is take, you could just use this bowl, but if you have like a, a container, just any type of container with a lid, and have, you know, you want some, uh, this is going to grow overnight. So you want some space there. I put a little oil, just a flavorless oil, like uh, canola, corn, vegetable, even a light olive oil. I just use a paper towel. And sure, it's covered. And then I take my dough, put it in there, and then so that the little bit of oil, and then I flip it over like so. And just put the lid on, and then you just want to let it sit on your counter. The optimum temperature is about 70 degrees, which is 21 C. You know, and you want to leave it for somewhere between 12 and 18 hours. So if your temperature is like a little cooler than the 70, 21 C, then you might want to leave it closer to the 18 hours. Conversely, if your kitchen's a little warmer, you might want to just do it for 12 hours. And so, this is the before, and as you can see, overnight, it ferments, and it gets spongy, and it gets quite soft. I'll take it out for you. <laughs> and lots of bubbles, air bubbles, see? 
and it's remember how that other one was so like dry this is nice and soft and spongy and very flavorful and that's what's going to add the flavor extra flavor to our um, bagel dough so I have my uh, pre-ferment already so we are going to start our bagel dough I'm just going to set up and we'll be right back so now for our bagel dough if you have a stem mixer like I have here you want to use your dough hook for this and the first thing this is really just basically a strong like white bread you will need one and a quarter cups plus one tablespoon, which is 310 grams, as always. If you have a scale, it's so much easier to uh, measure your ingredients with the scale. And I'm using icy cold water from the fridge. Actually, mine is, registers 50 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 10 degrees Celsius. Because I'm using such cold water as we're going to knead the dough. And when you knead the dough, it warms it up. So you want, to, you want your finished dough to be at room temperature, so you need to start with cold water. And we have our pre-ferment here. So what I like to do, I don't like to put like this big thing. <laughs> I like to chop it into smaller pieces. Just put that right in there. It's amazing making this little bit of dough the night before, how much flavor it will add to your finished bagel. Now I've got a lot in there, but actually when you put your pre-ferment in, it should go to the bottom and then rise up. That's how you know it's at the right, um, from, it's fermented long enough. So we got that in there. So for our dry ingredients, in a bowl, I have two and three quarter cups, which is 360 grams. I'm using an unbleached bread flour. Bread flour has a higher protein content than your all purpose, and that's gonna give the bagel that nice chewiness. And then, but I am adding one cup, 130 grams of all purpose flour, just to kind of balance, so it, make it a little softer along with the chewiness. And then for our yeast, one and a quarter teaspoons, four grams. Again, I'm using the uh, SAF Red Instant Yeast. You can use the, an equal amount of the active dry. Again, take about a quarter of a cup of that water, heat it to lukewarm, and then stir your yeast into there and let it get foamy. But I'm trying to convince you that it's so much easier to use instant yeast because we don't have to do that. We just put it right in here. And the great thing is, I know you have, when you buy instant yeast, you usually have to buy a fair amount, but you can just put it in the freezer. And then when you need to make bread, just take it out of the freezer, take it and measure out what you want, and then put it back in the freezer. So it doesn't go bad. Now, um, I'm using some malt powder, one tablespoon, which is 11 grams of uh, dry malt diastatic powder. That, uh, you know, it helps color, moistness, flavor. If you, normally you have to buy it online, but you can just leave it out if you can't find it. But again, if you make a lot of bread, I would, most bread recipes seem to call for the dry melt powder, so I would buy some. And again, you can just store it in the fridge. And salt. You will need one tablespoon, 14 grams. I'm using uh, kosher salt. And mix that in. You can just use your hand to mix. I'm using my whisk. And that's it for our ingredients. So now you will need a timer because we are going to mix our dough on first speed for five minutes. And what that does is essentially just get everything all mixed together. And then we're going to increase to second speed and 
knead it for three to four minutes until you get a nice smooth and elastic dough. It's going to be a strong dough. You know, sometimes you have a soft dough that's sticky. No, this is a strong dough, but I will show you that. So first speed, five minutes, second speed, three to four minutes. And I'll show you what you're looking for at the end of that. Okay, I think we're done. Now, bread dough can be sometimes soft and very sticky. Sometimes the texture can be very strong, depending on what you're making. A bagel dough is a strong dough, and the reason it's strong is because we're going to boil it, the bagels. And so the, they have to be strong enough so that they don't fall apart in the boiling water. So that's why, as you can see, this is a really, it's nice and smooth, it's elastic. It's not really sticky, but it's really strong. So what I'm gonna do is just tear off. So when you do that, just kind of twist. And then I like to wet my hands just a little. And we're gonna do what is called the window pane test. And that way you can kind of tell if it's hard to sometimes, you feel it and you go, that seems okay, but it, did you need it enough? And the, how you tell is take a small piece and then just kind of gently go around and pull it. And you don't want it to tear. If it, when you're pulling it, if it tears right away, you go, oh, I didn't, I need, uh, I have to <laughs> need it a little more. This, as you can see, it's really strong, but it's not tearing. So that's how I know for sure that my dough was ready. Now, what you need is a bowl. And, oh, just before, I, I like to take the temperature of my dough. And right now I'm sitting, it's a little warm. It's at 78, which is, uh, I'm going to say 25, 26 C. A little warmer. I, I typically like it to come out at around 75, which is 24 C, but that's, that's within the range. I'm not going to worry about it. So now you have a bowl and let's put a little oil again, the flavorless oil and, oh, and I should mention, which I didn't, if you have, this is an infrared thermometer, very cool thing. That's how I <laughs> tell my temperature of my dough. It's a fun tool to have. So, so if you're into kitchen gadgets, you'll probably want to get one. <laughs> or like what I did is just, I stole Rick's cause he had one for doing stuff around the house. So what I do is I put my dough in like that and then I flip it over so that there's a little bit of oil on the top of the dough so it won't dry out. And then cover it like so. And what we're going to do is just let it sit on the counter. Like I said, optimum temperature 75 Fahrenheit 24 C for just a half hour. And then we're going to pre-shape our uh, bagels. So just on another point, what I like to do is, like I said, my uh, dough was a little warm today. So I always write down when I'm, I'm making bread, the water temperature I use. And then two, I put the time that I made the dough, the temperature of the finished dough. That way I can keep track of the time, of course, because sometimes I forget. But two, like you can make adjustments next time. Like next time, if the room temperature is the same, I might have my water a little colder. So my, te my temperature of my final dough comes out where I want it, right around 75, uh, 24 C. So it's a good thing to uh, keep track of that. So like I said, half hour and we'll come back and we'll pre-shape our bagels. So now it's been a half hour. I forgot to say that if, say your kitchen is a little cool and you uh, need to proof your dough, what you can do is with your oven turned off, put your uh, dough in there. You could turn the oven light on for maybe 10 minutes or so to heat it up, but I wouldn't leave it on the whole time because actually that light in your oven can really heat up inside. So that's one way if your kitchen is a little cold to 
get it at that about 75 uh, Fahrenheit 24C. So now to divide our dough, have a baking sheet and I'm just putting a little bit of flour on there because we're going to do our pre-shape and put our dough on here and we don't want it sticking to our pan. And then I'm just putting a little dough or a little dough, a little flour on the, my counter and I'm just flipping it so the bottom becomes the top and put a little flour on top. I'm just going to get any air out of it. And now we're going to divide the dough. This amount of dough will give us 12 bagels. So we need to divide it into 12 equal pieces. Again, um, not only is the scale really good to measure your ingredients, but for something like this, it's perfect. Nine, with this amount of dough, it equals, to be exact, about 97 grams per bagel. So whenever you um, cut your dough, if you have a straight edge like this, or you can just use a knife, just cut through. And I will do one to... Okay. So now I'll just move that out of the way to show you. We want to get pat this into a rectangle. You can have a little flour on your counter right now to get it. It's not a real sticky dough, but just so so put it, you know, about like like that. And then what we're going to do is take the top and go down maybe a third and kind of seal it with your fingers. And then one more time, same thing, just seal it. Winning, just seal it with your fingers. And then again, take it and take it over like that and seal it again, like so. And then you have that seam. And then take the seam and have that on the bottom. Now, you can have floured hands, but you don't want your uh, counter to have any flour on it because we want to roll it and get some surface tension and seal that. And if, it's, if you have flour on your surface, it's just going to kind of slide around. So, and then just kind of press down. You can just use one hand just to seal. So if you look at it, it's hard to even tell where the seal is. And that's our pre-shape. And then we're just going to put it right on there like so. And just do that with the rest of your dough. Okay, so our last one. Seam side down. I'm going to just cover it with my plastic and we're going to let it sit ferment for every time you work your dough like we pre-shape then we want to let it relax and then so we're going to let it relax for a half hour again and then we're going to make our final bagel shape so see you in a half hour so now it's been another half hour so we are ready to form our logs into our bagel shape. So what you'll need is two baking sheets. I've lined mine with parchment, you don't have to. Uh, then you can either lightly oil your, um, with a flavorless oil like the vegetable corn canola, or I'm just using one of these nonstick sprays. Just very lightly spray either the pan or your parchment paper. And then I'm just gonna wipe that off. Because we put our, as you can see here, I've already done some. We put our bagels on that, and we don't want the bagels to stick. So if you put just a light coating of oil, that will, will prevent that from happening. So, I'll just wipe my hands there. For our um, bagel shape, we're going to roll our logs that we've done here into a 10 inch long, it's 25 centimeters. You can just use your ruler. What I do is I take my ruler and I just take some tape and I know that's 10 inches so then I don't have to every time get my ruler out, I can just measure it up to that. Again, you, uh, when, when you're rolling it, you want it, your counter not to be floured. You can flour your hands, it is a little sticky. 
So I just flour my hands a little. And then it can be a little gassy because we did let it sit a half hour. So you can just kind of. And then what we're going to do, yeah, some bubbles there. We're going to roll from the center outward to get until it's 10 inches, 25 centimeters. So just, I mean, you want it kind of the same thickness <laughs> if you can. And it tends to spring back. So roll it, lift it up, and kind of let it go down. And until you get it to the 10 inches, which is about there. And then what I do is I take my hand, and then I just go take that one and that one. And then there's a bit of an overlap to seal it. And just, and then flip it over so that seal is on the, your unfloured counter again. And then just kind of gently roll it back and forth to seal that seam. And that's it. That's our bagel. And then just put it on your sheet like that. I put six to a sheet, so I'm going to finish the rest same way. And my last one. Okay. So there we have it. Um, now, this bagel dough, unfortunately, we cannot, it takes time with bagels. You want a really good flavored white, you know, white bread. It takes time. Not, not that much work, just a lot of time in between. We had to make the pre-ferment and let that go overnight. Then we're making the dough, we're shaping it. And now, unfortunately, we have to store this overnight in the refrigerator. Because again, that, is, that time, when you let bread dough have time to ferment, that's what gives it that wonderful flavor. And these are really flavorful. So what we're gonna do is, I take a piece of plastic wrap, I lightly, you can oil it, or the easy way, lazy man's way is <laughs> the spray, and just lightly spray it, and I'm going to put just loosely over top. I, I oil it so that the, uh, as the dough sits, it's a little sticky, it won't stick to the plastic wrap. So just, and what we're going to do, we're going to let this just sit on the counter for, you know, 15, say 20 minutes. And then we're going to put, just take your whole baking tray and you're going to put it into the refrigerator overnight. It's going to have a slow rise and it has time, like I said, to ferment, to get flavor. And then when we come back tomorrow, we are going to boil them and bake them and enjoy fresh bagels. So we'll see you then. So we are back. It's the next morning. We are ready to boil and then bake our bagels. First thing we need to do is talk about the baking. I like to bake my uh, bagels on a pizza stone. So what you will need to do is have your oven rack in the bottom third of your oven and then put the pizza stone on there. And then I also like to create a little bit of steam for the bagels right at the beginning because it gives the uh, bagels a really nice outside crust. So what I do is put a cast iron frying pan on the bottom of the oven. Now, if you don't have a pizza stone and you don't have a cast iron fry frying pan, you can still bake your bagels. Just bake them right on a baking sheet. And if you want to create a little steam, you could just use a spray bottle and spray into your um, oven a little water. Just make sure you stay away from the glass of your oven. You don't want to break the glass. So um, you will need to preheat your oven to 450 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 230 degrees Celsius. Now, if you're using that baking stone, you need to really get that baking stone really hot. So you will have to preheat your oven, you know, somewhere between 45 minutes to an hour before you start the boiling of your bagels. So we have that. Now you want to, for the boiling, you want to take out your bagels about 10 to 15 minutes before you boil. I like them to be still a little cool so that they keep their shape when I put them in the water. 
for the water you will need a large pot and I can just turn that down just a little and you will need eight cups which is two liters of boiling water so I'll discuss the rest of that later so to boil your bagels we have to put them in the water and then we have to boil them on one side and then flip them so you can either do the flipping with a spoon or tongs and then to take them out we want to kind of strain our bagels get rid of any excess water so if you have some kind of strainer like this if you are baking your bagels on a pizza stone then if you have a pizza paddle use that or you could just use like your baking sheet as well and just put a little uh, well quite a bit of cornmeal or semolina on there so that when I put my bagels they don't stick if you are uh, and then you will need a metal spatula to transfer bagels from here onto your pizza stone if you're topping I love sesame seeds on my bagels if you want them plain you can just leave them plain and I have some, but I love sesame seeds, so I have some white sesame seeds. Poppy seeds you could use, or, you know, there's everything mix, I think, nowadays. You could use that. And, of course, you need a timer, because we are doing 45 seconds one side, and then flip the bagel another 45 seconds. And that's going to give us that really wonderful outside crust to your bagels. Now, another important thing. Um... You want that water, I'm going to put up to a full boil. And then what I'm adding is three tablespoons, which is 60 grams of honey. I know that kind of sounds a little weird, but it's really good. It's called, it, this type when you put the honey in is a Montreal style bagel. And it is, if you try it, it is wonderful. It, provides nice uh, a little flavor texture color it's wonderful you know the first time I had Montreal style bagels wasn't in Montreal we had moved to Ottawa and there was this bagel shop downtown and I couldn't believe it because I'd never really been in a bagel shop we lived in the Manitoba, Saskatchewan, and I didn't have a lot of bagels, at least I didn't, and oh, I can still taste them now, and that's a long time ago, it was in the early 80s, so it was a long time ago, but I was sold after that, so try it. Now, I know some use uh, baking soda, you could, you could do that, the same like a pretzel, but really, try the honey. You will be converted, I'm sure of it. So now, you want to put, I'm going to, I just got to bring that up to a full boil. I normally do it on my gas, but it's hard to demonstrate over there, so I'm using my induction burner, which is pretty good. You don't want to crowd your bagels in the water, a two to three in this amount. Well, that's pretty good, so just gently put them in. I like them a little cold so they hold their shape. I think I'm going to put three. So put the three in and then set your timer 45 seconds you know you can play with that that amount of time some people like to go down like 30 seconds some people like even up to two minutes so I'm gonna let you you can try it the 45 to one minute and then go from there and see if you like that if you want to kind of play with it So I'm going to flip them now. It's been about 45. I'm using my spoon. So I just flip them over. Like so. And then set your timer for another 45 seconds. Okay, we're at 45. So I'm going to take these out. So what I do, my strainer, just kind of, and then put it on there. And then I'm just going to, sorry, this is loud. I'm going to put these, my next three, because I'm doing six, baking six at once. And 
set my timer. And then if you want your sesame seeds, then just while they're still a little damp, just some people actually turn the, the bagel over and kind of put it right into the sesame seeds. I don't, I've tried that, but then I find I get too much, too much uh, sesame seeds. So I prefer just to sprinkle. I don't like to like overdo it. Okay, so last one. There. Okay, so now we are ready to bake our bagels. Everyone's oven is a little different. I'm going to evenly space these on the baking stone and then I'm going to quickly place about eight ice cubes into our cast iron frying pan to create some steam for, I'm going to say, 14 minutes. What you're looking for is they're going to turn a beautiful golden brown and when you tap the bottom, it will sound hollow. So in around that uh, 14 minutes. And then while these are baking, you can boil your next six. Okay, our bagels are done. Oh, they look gorgeous. <laughs> I always get so excited when I make bagels. Beautiful golden brown. If you, I don't know whether you can hear that, sounds hollow. And as you can see, they did puff up a little in the oven, and that's called an oven spring. So there is our bagels. Like I said, if you were doing this at home, I'm on camera, but I would then be putting in my next six and then you can be right off now um like i said i boiled my bagels in water or in water and honey which is the montreal style which is what i like like i said a lot of bakeries use food lye and uh, you know i'm not crazy about the food lye because you have to wear goggles and gloves you can't let it touch your skin it's hard to find and everything. So uh, the other alternative for the home baker is to boil in like the water and baking soda. And you can use a third of a cup, 90 grams of baking soda. Now, I've, I have AB'd that. I did six in the honey and six in the baking soda. I will tell you, the, just personal opinion, the honey just blows it away. <laughs> it's just the, the taste, the texture just so uh, try that. And I know some people don't, uh, besides honey, you can use like a malt syrup or even molasses. I've never tried that. I'm just saying, if you want to give that a, a try. Now, um, when you make your own bagels, you can see they're all different shapes. And that's what I like about homemade. A lot of times in a bakery, they do it all by machine. So every bagel is the same shape. So when you make them at home, it's not going to be that because, you know, you're doing it yourself by hand. So it's going to be different shapes. So that's about all I think I need to tell you for now. I'm going to let those cool down, and then we will try one. Okay, so let's try one. They're still a little warm, my favorite way to eat them. That's when, I don't know whether you can hear it, the outside crust is still crisp and Inside, it's really nice and soft and moist. Oh. <laughs> that, that's really good. <laughs> like I said, the outside crust, it will soften as you get down to room temperature, nice and chewy. You can uh, adjust the chewiness by how long you boil. 
your uh, bagels. When they're hot or warm, I just like to eat them like this. I know cream cheese, always a favorite. You can have them that way. And then, like, especially, okay, they're best the first day. But what I do is I, you know, slice them in half. And you can toast them the second, third day. They're really good. Or what I do is if I'm not eating them all on the first day, I slice them in half and then I freeze them. And really, when you freeze them the next day or when you take them out and you just pop them in your toaster, really handy. So really, I know it's a little bit of a process, but people are going to say, what bakery did you buy these from? So it's worth the effort. And until next time, I'm Stephanie Jaworski of joybaking.com. Thank you.